a Bessemer, Bessemer who just jumped, hold on. This meeting, okay, got it. Uh, Linda Bessemer, she's just joined as well. Uh, they'll be leading this call, this Mayon session. Um, we're scheduled for an hour. We'll try to be very respectful of everyone's time. Uh, they'll go in and show you the program. I know we had a, a short agenda, uh, spend some uh, and share, share some time for question and answering with that. So with that, I'll, I'll send it off to Marcy. Is there anything you wanted to share before we get started? Yeah, so um, I just want everybody to know that, you know, I know we're hitting crunch time, but uh, I've already started putting files and resources in Schoology, so you can check there as well. It is important that everybody try today sometime to log in, and we'll get to that towards the end. I just want to make sure that you guys can, can help make sure that everything went in smoothly, because I know we had hiccups on the tech side on our side, so... We just need to see how that works. So, okay, thank you, Linda. Hi, good to see you. Hi, great. So sorry for the delay there. Um, you know, the wonderful thing about technology is that it's technology and life happens. So I, I do apologize um, for that slight delay. Um, what we wanted to do um, was begin by showing you um, an overview of the program. And so what I'm going to do is share my screen. Linda, would you like questions to be put in the chat if any come up or to wait till the end or what would that, you prefer? That, that would be wonderful. And um, Carl is going to go ahead and manage the chat for me so that um, he can kind of um, help gauge that. And um, uh, uh, Carl and I are both librarians by profession. So uh, we do understand um, exactly what what you all are um, are wrestling with and some of the nuances. So um, if uh, if you wouldn't mind putting the questions in the chat, that would be great. And um, we welcome um, your full participation. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is log in as my um, I'm going to log in as the building administrator. And let me just grab my password. I had everything set up on my other computer, um, but I have it handy here. So hang on one sec. Um, and so what I wanna do first is log in with the same type of login that you as librarians will have. And we've set you up as the um, building administrators so that you have access to all of the student rosters in your building. You're also going to have um, uh, the ability to um, assign things directly to students. You can create groups and you can do everything that a building principal would do, including um, running reports for your entire campus. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is kind of walk you through the platform just so that you can kind of see what the different tabs are. Then what I'd like to do is go ahead and log in um, as a teacher so that you see a little bit of that experience. And then I'm going to log in. I have an elementary, a middle school, and a high school demo student login. We're going to share those with you so that you can... Um, uh, kind of play with those from the student experience side. Um, please keep in mind two things. One is that um, we are not on the Renaissance um, platform. So once you get into Mayan, this is exactly what your system is going to look like. But because we're not on the Renaissance platform, we can't mirror that for you. Um, the second thing is, um, if you do choose to utilize the demo um, usernames and passwords that we'll share with you, those are on our demo school. We'll keep them up um, for about a week through next um, Friday. Uh, we do have all of the add-on publishers that are available through Mayan, and those are not um, uh, publish, those are publishers that are available at an additional fee. So again, we wanted to make sure that you understood um, that again, if you are playing around with the demo accounts, you're going to see a lot more publishers. Um, but again, those it's a good way to kind of explore. What you do have are the five capstone imprints. 
So you have um, stone arch readers, you have picture book, um, uh, picture windows, you have capstone, um, you have um, Heinemann Rain Tree and Compass Point Press. So as librarians, you're probably um, somewhat familiar again with those um, capstone imprints. So when you log into your campus, you'll obviously see the number of uh, teachers that you have at your campus. So you won't see the large number that I have. You'll see the number of students. And this will be kind of the running uh, record, if you will, for the total number of books um, at your campus that students have read and the total amount of time. Um, so that's this, uh, again, kind of gives you that dash dashboard snapshot. If you click on the library tab, you're going to see a couple of different things. Um, as a building administrator and a teacher, you really don't have recommended books, but students will have recommended books. And the book recommendations are set using a couple of different factors. The first are going to be the interests, and we'll talk about the interest survey in just a moment. Um, so we ask students kind of readers advisory, what kinds of books do you like to read? What do you enjoy reading? And that helps kind of guide the books that we recommend for students. The second piece that goes into that book recommendation is either the student's assigned um, grade level that comes through your student information system, or if you have students take the benchmark that's built into the Mayan system, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. If you have students take that benchmark, that figures out what the student's instructional reading level is, and then it will actually provide those recommendations to books based on what students' interests are. It does take into account what their age is. If you've got a ninth grader reading on a second grade level, we're not going to give them Duck Goes Potty but we might give them some simpler books that would still be of interest to a ninth grader reading at a lower reading level. So um, again, those things kind of all go into play. And then when students read a book, they have the opportunity to actually rate the book with one to five stars. Um, and the book rating goes into the recommendation engine as well, because we want that feedback from students as to which books um, have you read that you liked. And again, that all goes into the recommendation engine. Um, the next tab is browse. And you can browse the library by um, genre or by different types of books. And you can see um, about me, animals, all the way down to scary and gross, science, um, social emotional learning. Um, so you have all the different topics. Um, students can um, search by ATOS level, uh, look for fiction or nonfiction. And if you have students that really like that graphic novel format, they can click graphic no novel format only and see just books that are in that graphic novel format. So this is a way to kind of browse more by topic, um, if you will. Another way that the student um, can browse is they can actually go to the um, search engine and the search engine will let the student, and again, we're logged in as the building administrator, but teachers will see the same interface and students will see the interface, but the interface will be a little bit different for your younger students versus your older students. So the interface is going to be age appropriate um, I have this set to a higher level, so um, I can actually limit my search um, in using different types of filters. Um, so again, and Linda, if you could just mention about the martini glass since it's Friday afternoon. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, so the martini glass, as a colleague of ours calls it, is the way that you, um, if your screen looks like this and you say, oh my gosh, you know, Linda showed us all these um, filters and um, different, you know, ways to structure my search and I don't see any of it. If you just click on the funnel or the martini glass, it should actually open up um, the search features. So if we looked at um, say a category of um, rocks, if you will, then you can see um, we've picked up 79 books. 
Um, what we can do is we can limit that by Lexile level, or we can limit that by grade level. And maybe, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for um, kind of that um, upper elementary level. And now I've got 56 books. Um, you can also uh, limit by language. Um, and the, these, um, the search terms will come from all the metadata that comes from the publisher. So you can say you want to limit rocks to just the, to the say the title and the description. Um, and you can see we've kind of narrowed our, um, our pool of books down based on that. So again, um, you don't have full Boolean search um, capabilities. You're really just doing keyword searches here. But again, um, there you, you do have qu quite a bit of power. Um, the other way that uh, teachers can search is by standard. And I can go in and I can say, I wanna search by, I want to search by the TEKS. Um, you can select a topic. Um, say I wanted to search uh, science. You can select a grade level, and the you can see that the right now the um, TEKS alignment goes up through grade eight. So I can search grade five, and I'm going to look at my science TEKS, and I've got 428 books. And again, I can get very, very specific. And you'll have all of the metadata about these books. You'll have the ATOS level, the Lexile level. This is a book appropriate for students anywhere from grades uh, three through grade six. It has 32 pages and it does have a full audio component. All of the books that are in the um, uh, capstone imprints have a full audio component. Um, and we actually hired voice actors and actresses to perform the books. So they're very engaging. Um, it's not a text-to-speech um, uh, artificial um, voice at all. Uh, so the, the voices are real. And so you can see for this particular book, if a student were to listen to the book, it would take them 27 minutes and 58 seconds. If a student says they've read this book and you go in and look at the record and they spent five minutes, you have a pretty good idea they probably didn't read the book. Um, so you're, you, you, you get a sense um, of, of, of that. And again, you'll have uh, the page count as well. So this is a, a really um, nice feature for your teachers that might be interested in looking at Mayan to help support classroom instruction. Um, let's see, um, favorites and bundles, um, that's an opportunity for um, when I'm in the library, I can heart or favorite a book, and then I um, can put all of those books here, and I can actually set up collections or groups of books, and those can be shared with students. I can actually put those books into a project, and we'll talk about projects in a little bit. Um, the difference between our bundles and projects is a, when you share a bundle with the student, you cannot check and see whether or not the student has actually read all of the books in the bundle. Um, when you um, assign books to a student um, using a project, then you can actually check and see whether or not students have completed that project. Did they actually do the reading that you asked them to do? Um, the next tab is our news tab, and you folks have the uh, Mayan News, which is a uh, daily news feed. Um, your students will see five articles a day, five days a week, 52 weeks per year. Every news article has been vetted by a child psychologist that's on staff, and all of the articles have been written specifically for Mayan News. When we click on an article, and the articles are available in three different grade bands, a K2, 3, 5, and a 6, 8. So every article has three readability levels and articles are available in English, but articles are also available in Spanish, French, Arabic, and Mandarin. And that 
includes a complete audio component. So if I want to listen to the book in English, you just click on the speaker. So Linda, we can't hear your audio. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what happened when I shared? I did not. Um, let me stop sharing. I'm so sorry. Um, let me stop sharing and then let me, if I go to share my screen again and share sound, I'm so sorry. Um, let me try that one more time. Our nurses, our future. Honor healthcare heroes on International Nurses Day. Nurses have a very important job. They often work long hours taking care of people. They help comfort and heal patients, and they save lives each and every day. And then just so that you can see, if I move to the Spanish interface, you can see that the um, uh, language is now in Spanish. And if I check on um, my speaker. Nuestras enfermeras, nuestro futuro. Celebra a los héroes de la salud en el Día Internacional de la Enfermera. Las enfermeras desempeñan un rol vital en nuestra sociedad. And again, um, you've got Arabic, you've got Mandarin, again, with the full audio as well. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of other features um, uh, with the uh, Mayan News. Um, you can change the size of the text. When you click on the uh, little globe, it will pull up a map and it will tell you um, where the article um, is taking place. So we're going to be um, hearing more about nurses in Geneva, Switzerland. We can see how far away that is from Houston, Texas, because that's where my locator um, location is sent, set, um, how long it would take us to fly from Houston, Texas to Geneva, Switzerland, and then how many first aid kits. They always have a fun fact, how many first aid kits it would take stacked end to end to get from Houston, Texas to Geneva, Switzerland. Um, if your students click on the hello button. Switzerland has four official languages. They are French, German, Italian, and Romanche. In this part of Switzerland, more people speak German. They say hello like this. Guten Tag. So it'll always tell you how to say hello in the language of that country. If I tap on the propeller, it's again, it's going to give me a little fun fact. Every article or uh, the majority of the articles will have a quick little movie. Um, you'll also have just a quick little PowerPoint. It's usually um, three to four slides with more information. We always try and have a fact. And then we try and empower students. So uh, there is an action and things that students can do um, to take action. Um, we wanna make sure that students understand how important it is to be able to go back and look at the um, what the original sources are. And so um, we do um, have information about the author and then um, the bibliography of what the sources are that the author used to actually write the article so that students can go back and do their own fact checking. Um, at the bottom of every article are anchor books, usually somewhere between one to three books, that if the students get excited about that particular topic, they can actually go into the book and uh, click on the book. It'll take them right into that book in Mayan and the student can read more um, in Mayan about that particular topic. They're also, <clears throat> excuse me, if I go back to um, today's edition, um, there's also a teacher guide for every edition or every day. And in the teacher guide, um, it's going to give me information about the Lexile count at the different grade bands for um, each article. There is a, a little um, quiz for each article. It's going to give you the vocabulary. Um, and this is all academic vocabulary. It'll give you open-ended questions. And then at the very end, so you have this information for every article. 
um, you always have a 5W chart and then a KWL chart. And that's just included um, with my on news. Let me go back to here. Um, the articles will cover things like um, uh, US and international news, science and technology, the arts and culture, sports, and animals. And then there's usually some kind of a wacky um, article you can see today. Um, again, it'll um, on Friday, it always gives you something that's a little bit more um, entertaining. So again, um, you know, $120,000 banana. So <laughs> as, as part of that article. Um, and then the last component, um, which is, um, and again, teachers will have, uh, it'll say my classroom rather than my school, but it's going to give you information about the users, um, rosters and groups, uh, projects, reports, and then the account itself. Um, so that's a little bit more about the, um, the platform overall. What I want to do is log in as a teacher so that you can kind of see that teacher experience and then log in as a student. Um, Carl, are, before I leave the building administrator access, are there any questions we need to address? No, folks look like they're pretty happy so far, so keep wowing them. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to um, log out as a building administrator, and now I'm going to log in as a teacher. Well, heck. Okay. What happens when you save things on your other computer? Um, all righty, I'm gonna log in as my students then um, and show you those things. Um, three things um, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna log in as an elementary school student first. Um, three things that I wanted to talk about are, um, there are three controls that are set um, at the district level. Um, one of those controls, um, let me go back here. That's my bad. Um, so one of the controls is um, there are quizzes. So every book in Mayan has a quiz associated with it. And the quizzes can be turned off at the district level. If they're turned off at the district level, then no one can access the quizzes. If they're um, turned on at the building level, then it's up to each individual campus as to whether or not they want the quizzes turned on or turned off. Our recommendation for summer reading when you're really trying to encourage students to read for pleasure is to keep the quizzes turned off. But we have had districts that have had them turned on and students have read hundreds of books anyway. So that really is up to you. Um, another uh, district level decision is where I am right here. I'm logged in as an elementary student. The first thing students are gonna see is that interest survey. And I'll take you back and show you that. Um, students may see this um, uh, assessment and this assessment is something that you can um, have students bypass, or if you want students to take the assessment, again, what it's going to do is help figure out what the student's instructional reading level is to guide those book recommendations for the student. Um, and again, that's kind of a district level decision as to whether um, Ms. Marcy wants that to be up to each campus or you want to kind of set a policy. The other thing that's a district level decision is there is a Spanish interface for the platform and that is a toggle so you can switch between English and Spanish. And when I finish this particular assessment, um, I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see that um, again, here are the um, 
I'm just going to guess my way through here. I'm not really reading these, um, but again, you'll see that it is an adaptive placement. So it placed me very quickly because I, you know, wasn't paying too much attention. Um, then as a student, um, what I want to show you is I had already taken the interest survey because I wanted to show you the quiz. I can always click up here on my name and I can find out what my reading level is. If I go to interest, it's going to let me um, edit my interest survey. It shows me my activity, my journal article, my portfolio, and students and staff have the opportunity to choose their avatar. You don't want them to spend too much time here, but again, um, it's kind of a fun thing um, that it may be that every time a student um, finishes X number of books, you say, you know, you can go in and change your avatar. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll look at the interests. So the interest survey lets me choose what languages um, I want to see things in. Um, and so I want to see books in English and in Spanish. And then I have the opportunity. Do I want graphic novels and cartoons, science, language arts? So the default, um, and the, I have this set up, again, this is an elementary student. These are all kind of in the middle. Um, if I were to, uh, when we log in as a middle school, I'll show you what a student, I'll show you what it looks like um, for older students. And the students will have slider bars rather than the smiley and frowny faces. So. Um, but this is kind of that reader's advisory component. What kinds of books do you like to read? So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I've saved the languages. So now as a student, you can see um, when I start, um, my dashboard lets me see um, different types of books that are recommended for me. And these have been recommended based on my grade level and then also my, um, my reading level. I can also um, just click and go to the library. And um, this banner, this rotating banner, which are um, books that uh, Renaissance is highlighting, this is something that can be turned off at the district level, or you can turn it off at the building level. And that's, again, that's another district level decision, whether or not you want this um, banner, because um, again, it will, it does, in students see it. So it is, um, some districts um, don't want this influencing the choices that students make. So again, that that is kind of up to you. And you can see this button is always going to be here for the student edit your interests in case the student changes their mind about books um, that they're interested in. So what I want to do is um, go ahead and um, click on a book, um, maybe one that isn't going to be um, too long, I do want to make sure you have an opportunity to kind of see um, that student experience. You'll also see that there's a record button and students do have the opportunity to record themselves reading the book so that teachers can actually listen to the student. And it's a great way for students to practice that oral fluency component. So Mayan is truly going to have the reading, writing, listening, and speaking components. Um, I can also pull up more information about the book. Um, I can see it has 36 pages. It's going to take me about three minutes to read. Um, if I uh, do the heart, I add it to my favorites. So it kind of puts it on a virtual bookshelf. I'm going to go ahead and push the record button just so that we can kind of try that out. And I have to allow um, the microphone to be accessed by Mayan. And then I can listen to the book. The living sea is very wide, very wide, very wide. So many places there to hide where sand and restless sea collide. So you can see that that's, um, a, 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 again, you can uh, let the student listen to the um, how the book would be read. And then I'm going to go ahead and record myself. The living sea is very wide, very wide, very wide. 
so many places there to hide where sand and restless sea collide. And then I can listen to it. The living sea is very wide, very wide, very wide. So many places there to hide where sand and restless sea collide. And then if I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and um, I can submit that to my teacher. And that's this turn it in button over here. So if I turn it in, um, then my teacher is going to get that recording of my book. So let me go back to that book a second time. And what I wanna do is just show you quickly some of the other tools. So um, this is the book reader interface. The living sea is very wide, very wide, very wide. So many places there to hide where sand and restless sea collide. So the audio is a scaffold that's available to students. I can simply move from Clownfish page fish colors, to page. orange and white, orange and white. And I can um, just turn that off. So if, if I'm an older student and I don't need that audio support, that's a scaffold that I don't have to use. Um, there are also a set of tools. And with the tools, we let the student um, actually use a highlighter with different colors, a, a palette of highlighters, and the student can um, highlight things that they think are important. Um, there's a student journal uh, where students can take notes or if they find a book that they like. Um, let's see, this is... Um, then I can actually, um, I can actually copy text from the book. Um, so the student journal lets me kind of take notes and I can have a citation for every book or I can have a journal entry for every book that I'm reading. Um, what's really nice is my teacher is going to be able to go back and kind of see what I'm doing in the book. And anytime I do um, use the tools on the book, this little tool symbol is going to show up. So you can see when I read the first and second page, there wasn't anything on there, but I did do some markups on this page. And the teacher can actually see that and can assign um, activities around that. So um, as a student, then um, I can go into the news. I'm going to see exactly um, what you saw, other than um, I'm not going to have that um, a teacher guide. I can show you the interface here. If I click on the button at the bottom that says English and click Espanol, you can see that um, now when I go to the library and I go to search, that everything is going to be in Spanish. If you have changed the interface to Spanish, you do need to search in Spanish. So if I search family, I may come up with some things. Um, if I search familia, if I'm looking for books in Spanish, um, then I want to use Spanish to do that Spanish search. Um, and again, that's a toggle switch. Um, so that's something that can be set at the individual campus level as to whether or not you want um, books to be available in English and Spanish. And you can see um, my interface here um, looks like this. When I click on the little funnel, you can see this is much simplified from the older student version that we were looking at when we were logged in as a building administrator. And then projects would be anything that my teacher has assigned to me. So right now my teacher hasn't assigned any projects to me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and log out as an elementary student. I'm sorry to get over here. And I'm gonna log in as my middle school student. And as a middle school student, you can see my dashboard looks a little bit different rather than the um, little scooter. Um, 
I've got a meter reader, and this is going to be very, uh, the um, secondary interface from grade six all the way on up is going to look more like this. And you can see I do actually have um, some projects that have been assigned to me. My library is going to look the same. Um, news, um, if I click into an article, it's going to be set at a higher readability level. Um, and again, projects, um, there are some projects that have been assigned to me. And so I can click on a project and see that um, this is an article in my own news. Um, that I've been assigned um, to read this. I've been um, asked to write definitions of these different terms and then to um, write a short constructed response. So again, you can see what we're trying to do is give students a little bit more of that experience from that STAR 2023 um, that, that you all, um, that your students have are seen. You can see this little purple envelope up here. And this basically says, find out your new reading level and unlock new avatars. If I click go, then I'm going to get that built-in um, Mayan assessment. If I don't wanna take that or my teacher has not um, asked me to take that, then I can simply close that and ignore it. Um, the um, high school, is going to um, look very similar. And again, um, you can see the books that are recommended for the student um, look different. And when I click on library, Again, my, my book recommendations are going to be geared, you know, more appropriately um, based on my interests and um, the fact that I'm a high school student. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit more about um, project, projects quickly and then what we would recommend for that, um, that the best experience over the summer for your students, what we would recommend that you um, try and do in the time remaining before students leave for summer. So before I leave the student demos, is there anything else that folks wanted to see on the student side? There are no um, unanswered questions in the chat. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and um, log in then as my building administrator. Let me just get back to my password here. All right. Well, I'm so sorry. Oh, my caps lock was on. Um, what I will say, um, lesson learned, is that the passwords are case sensitive. Um, usernames are not. Passwords are case sensitive. And so um, you will want to keep that in mind um, if you are asked to create your um, own password. You wanna make sure that, uh, again, you're keeping that in, in mind. Um, so um, what we wanted to talk about just very briefly is the project environment. Um, so I've um, gone back into Mayan. I've clicked on my school. Um, 
at the teacher level, it would say my classroom, but the rest of these tabs would be the same. And when I click on projects, what we wanted to show you were um, a couple of things. You have your own um, individual project environment. So every teacher and then the building administrator. And then the cloud is basically um, projects that have been created by other users in Mayan. And so you can um, create projects and actually share them. So you can have projects within your school, projects within your school district, projects that other school districts have created, and then projects that Renaissance has created or Mayan has created. And you can search projects and you can use these different filters. Um, one of the things that we have done is we've created um, some projects that many of our customers use over the summer. And so the first one I'm going to um, just go in and type in the word English dash FPGR, which um, will bring up projects that are in English that follow the Fontes and Pinnell guided reading. And you can see they go A all the way through Z. And if I wanted to download and assign a project to first grade students or students that I knew were reading at guided reading level A, as an example, um, the first thing you would do is click on the I to investigate. You would want to copy to my projects. We do recommend that you change the name of the project. So you might just put SISD dash or your campus name. And you can also add the additional tag. So you can put SISD and say, I want to add that. Um, if I click mark as shared, then this new version of the project is actually going to go out into that Mayan cloud that we just looked at. Um, right now, I'm not going to mark it as, um, as shared because I don't want another version of the project out there. Um, but what you can do then is um, click on this little gear. And this lets you actually go in and manage the book so that you can go in and say, gosh, you know, maybe I like all of these books except for um, this book on matter words. And that's just really not appropriate. You can deselect that. You can go ahead, um, if you save that change to save it, this kind of counterintuitive, just click on the X. Um, it's automatically made that change and you can see matter words is no longer here. Um, and then if you click on save, it will make that change to your project. So that's now been saved to your project. Um, and all of your inactive projects kind of live together um, in this environment. Once I've assigned the project to a student, um, say I want to go ahead and assign this to my um, demo student. Oh, that's because I did that. Um, you can see here's my demo student in my elementary school. I can say, yep, I want to go ahead and assign that project to that student. It moves from this um, gray area of an active up to assigned. And then I can go in at any point in time and, um, excuse me, I can go in at any point in time and just monitor this and see it was assigned to one student, that student hasn't started the project and the project hasn't been finished. So this is kind of how teachers, once a project has been assigned, they can actually go in and monitor it. Um, we did go ahead, I've clicked back on project, I'm gonna click on cloud, and I'm going to type in Spanish dash FG, uh, excuse me, FP, GR for Fontes and Pinnell um, guided reading. And you can see now that I've pulled up um, 
the books that are in Spanish for Fontes and Pinnell guided reading. So again, here's guided reading level B, Fontes and Pinnell. So here are all the books that are in Spanish. And again, I would use that same process if that's a book that I'm in, a project that I'm interested in, I simply copy to my projects. I want to make sure that I'm um, uh, changing the name of it, especially if I want to share it out. Um, otherwise, um, if you're um, downloading a project um, and you share it and you save it with the same name, then you end up with duplicate projects. Um, and especially if you're making changes, um, one of the first things we recommend when you're downloading a project is to go ahead and change the name. I did um, send to Ms. Marcy a PDF that has um, some resources on it. Um, and the resources include things like our how-to webinars, um, the um, uh, uh, educator resource kit, and then um, I've included some things that people might be interested in, like how to create a group of students or the whole project environment. And so that PDF that I've sent to Ms. Marcy earlier today actually has links to all of the different types of help that um, Renaissance has available. You also can always simply go to the bottom of your screen and you'll see uh, my on Smart Start. And that kind of um, gives you a very systematic way where you can um, look at uh, videos, you can look at getting students started. Um, so you have some things there. Or if you click on Renaissance Help, then you can um, get assistance in this way where you can say, um, gosh, I'm really interested in dashboards for my own users or logging in. Um, I do want to mention um, when it comes to mobile devices um, that we do actually have uh, an offline reader that is free. It is available for iPad, Android, uh, Kindle Fire HDs, and any device that has Chrome. And what that offline reader lets students do is download up to 20 books on a virtual bookshelf on that device. Students will have the book reader available, so they'll be able to listen to the book. Um, the tools that are part of the literacy tools, um, the highlighting in the journal, those are all things that depend upon the internet. And so those are not available for those downloaded um, books. But for students that do not have internet access at home, but may have a device, they can go anywhere where there is an internet connection, whether it's McDonald's or the parking lot of the school, they can log into Mayan, they can go to the um, mobile app, they can download those 20 books. Um, when a student is done reading those books, all they need to do is log back into Mayan somewhere where they have um, internet connectivity the reading that the students have done on that device while not connected to the internet is automatically uploaded to the device, uh, uploaded to the student's account from the device. And then the student can actually return those books and the student can download 20 more books. Um, one of the things I wanted to um, just uh, share with you that's unique about Mayan is that um, Mayan is a library where no book is ever checked out. Um, so every book is available to an unlimited number of simultaneous users. So um, if you wanted to do a readathon and wanted every student, every elementary student, every third grader reading the same book at the same time, you can do that on my own. Um, and we ask all of our publishing partners to make, make that available as well. So no book is ever checked out in my own. Um, so that's that's a really great thing. So what we do recommend, um, I'm going to stop um, sharing my screen at this point. What we do recommend for summer reading, um, again, um, is that uh, you do turn the quizzes off. Um, we do find that that um, tends to um, create a better experience. 
you'll need to make a decision whether or not you want that um, Spanish platform um, available. So that's an on or off switch that can be toggled back and forth. You will want to make sure that every student has the opportunity to log into Mayan before they leave school. And ideally, every student would click on their, they'd complete that um, reader survey, that interest survey. And then they'd go to the library um, where they can see book recommendations, open up a book, actually get in and start to read a book. Um, again, ideally have the student actually complete a book um, they do have the opportunities, I said, to kind of rate the book from one to five stars. Um, there is a book review component where students can write their own review of the book. Um, and then um, at the, when a student completes reading a book, there's actually an end button and the book gets uh, logged as having been read by the student if they actually um, click that end button. Um, that is another thing that we find if you do leave the quizzes turned on and students want to avoid the quiz, they find out if they get to the end of the book and they don't click end book, um, that the quiz won't pop up. And so you won't get a true measure of whether of how many books students have actually completed. So um, if students are kind of trying to get around that. Um, and again, one of the other things we'd recommend is to also then have students actually law um, check out um, the Mayan News, click on that news tab and go in, um, click on an article, um, experience that article, whether it's in English or in Spanish, and then see what those different options are that I showed you. Uh, that geography button, the opportunity um, to see that short little video, check out more facts, um, the student action component. Um, and then again, students may or may not be interested in the bibliography, you know, the information um, that the author used to actually um, write the article. But again, we feel it's important to always have that information there. Are there any questions that you have? I know I've gone very quickly, but I wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity um, to kind of, um, see a little bit more about what the interface looked like, and then actually see what your students are going to be seeing um, the first time that they log into Mayan and a little bit more about what the student experience is. Um, and I see that folks are waiting for um, usernames and passwords. Let me go ahead and um, in the chat, I'm going to put the um, the demo passwords that um, I have for Mayan for you all. And again, these are my account, uh, Carl's and my account. We'll keep these active through um, next Friday. These are student accounts. So this is so that you can log in as an elementary student, a middle school or a high school student. Keep in mind um, that if your colleagues are using the same credentials, you may be putting books on the favorite shelf and others might be doing the same. So when you're um, sharing an account, um, it's going to operate a little bit differently. And you'll also have access to all of the add-on publishers that Mayan has available. Um, the pilot that you all have for the summer are the five capstone imprints, which is still um, over 7,000 books. So you still have, you have access to a, a nice library of both English, um, Spanish, and bilingual titles. So the elementary, um, um, you, uh, I'm gonna just put M elementary student demo. And please remember that um, passwords are case sensitive. The middle school demo username. Um, Linda, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Um, I know that we uploaded all the librarians as admin today. Um, yeah. I, I shared in the chat what their username and password would be. Okay. Can we ask them to try? I wanna see if it works. I know. Um, oh, that would be great. 
Yeah, it's going to be your, your, your username is going to be your first name with your last name initial, um, capitalize for the beginning of each one. And the password for everyone will be welcome with a capital W, one, two, three, four. Um, I want to see if they're able to get in because um, we logged into the system as Lisa Lopez uh, just a little while ago, and you were good to go. But the problem was that not all of the schools had been um, rostered. And so, um, but everyone here should have admin access. I know Marcy, um, we're having some issues with her here. So I just want to make sure that everyone else is able to get in. And if, if you find you're not able to log in, if you would let um, Roy know, um, Roy or and or Miss Marcy, then we can kind of track, um, again, if, if we have um, uh, building administrator logins that are not working. So people are it, saying it that they- be I, I believe it's Renaissance within Clever. It's not gonna be Mayan, it's gonna be Renaissance within Clever. So within Clever, if you see the Renaissance tile or Renaissance icon, and the only thing that should be there in the Renaissance icon is Mayan. So they did they did get the name usernames and I'm uh, not usernames, but the, your names from the uh, roster that we have in our Schoology. So um, if I misspelled something, then they will have also misspelled something. So you might want to check that. Out. So um, Carl did put Roy's um, uh, email address in the chat, and he's also put uh, my email address, and uh, Carl put his email address in the chat as well. So please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, again, um, Carl and I are librarians. We've worked with the Mayan program since 2013, when it only had, it had fewer than 4,000 books way back when. And so we're just delighted to um, see all the, there weren't projects or tools or anything else. It was just a little library of ebooks. So um, it's grown over the years and um, we love all the different environments. I think the, um, the audio components, both the listening as well as the speaking components are great additions as well as all of the literacy tools and then the ability for uh, teachers to actually assign books to students along with um, uh, the one of the other tools um, more on the teacher side is that um, there's also uh, an essay writer so teachers can ask students um, to provide a written response as well. So people are logging in but not seeing my on um, do you see renaissance um so if you click on if you are logging in through clever and you see renaissance if you click on the renaissance tile or icon hopefully that will bring you um that should take you into my on i i we can't see what you're seeing so it's um so it should be showing up in your uh, instant login apps. Um, I can. Um, would it be possible, Linda, for you to let uh, Marcy share her screen? Sure, um, absolutely. Miss um, Marcy, I'm going I mean, to let me you make can, you. Mine won't look like theirs though, because I have huh. district admin. So um, is, is there someone that was able to log in and I can um, make them the co-host and maybe uh, they can. Lisa Avila at Waco, are, are you okay to share your screen with us? Uh, sure. Okay, let me um, find you in the participants here. You clicked on Renaissance, but sorry, you Wait. typed something else. I did click on and log into the Renaissance icon, but it's not there. Which yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't show. It just gives me like if I had AR, but without AR, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. 
with is this Lisa Lopez? Avila. Okay. Um, let me find you. It, then. it isn't. Uh, it shouldn't be a Renaissance link. It should say Mayan. On on Clever. Oh. Yeah, on Clever. Okay. It it looks like um, a little white box with purple my and red on. Okay, I think I found you. Um, so I think I've made you the co-host. So if you want to um, share your screen. Okay, so I'm on Clever. I clicked on this one. So you should be able to scroll down. So that, that one said accelerated reader on it. Right. We were, we're looking for my own. Right. I don't have it. It wouldn't be under links, it'd be on instant sign in. So I don't, but I don't see it there either. This is this is all I have on my clever. Right. Okay. So did I, so, but I did go to the district page there. Right, and it should be under instant sign in, um, like those apps, like yeah. Gail is there, but it should also have a Mayan link. So I'm surprised it's not there because uh, Edna told us that you guys would all be able to see it. Maybe they missed me. <laughs> oh no, it seems like that's everybody. Oh, okay. Yep, that, that you're all seeing Renaissance, but not Mayan. Um, okay. Well, 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 we'll definitely get, I do see though that you have um, Nearpod. Does every, do all the campuses have a Nearpod subscription? They yes, do they have do. a Nearpod, yes. Oh, okay. So one of the other things that I do want to mention since you have that, um, if you click on Nearpod, um, and go into um, a, um, up, let's see, if you click where it says um, search by topic or standard, and if you just type in Mayan, and then just, yeah, and you'll see here are all these wonderful lessons that have been created um, by Renaissance with Nearpod, and when you go into the lesson, there will be part, um, as a teacher might go through the lesson, it'll have a link for students to click and they'll click right in and go right into that page on the Mayan book. That's the other thing is that um, for every book in Mayan, um, every book has a distinct URL and every page has its own URL. So you can actually, assign a students a page. If you wanna direct students to go to a specific page, they can do that. Or if you want students to go to a book in Mayan. So you, um, it makes it um, much easier to use as a, 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 a resource to help support um, classroom instruction, because again, you can take students to a very specific page. But um, with that Nearpod connection too, you're gonna to see you've got a lot of, um, really nice lessons. And you can see, of course, their teaks aligned. You can see the 110-3.b.6.b. That's your um, that's your teaks coding right there. So all of these projects are gonna be teaks aligned for you as well. Um, we'll clearly though need to um, work with the IT folks and make sure um, that we um, that we get this um, straightened out. So we'll um, and um, Dawn, were um, I see Dawn that you were indicating that um, you got a an error message. Were you able to get logged in at all though? No, I'm sorry, I wasn't. It was I actually got went in through Renaissance, so I I okay. didn't that. I thought it was appearing that way instead of as my own, but. Okay. 
I know it's not there. Thank you. Okay, so um, so Roy and I will follow up with Edna and the tech department because I, I obviously there is something on this side. I was able to see, I'm able to see the link. I'm not able to log in. Uh, I've seen my daughter on her account and when I click on it, it says you haven't been enrolled yet, right? Which is a different error than it used to be. So it's really just a matter of, we need the librarians to get in so they can assign it to the teachers and then we'll be able to see it. Um, so I think we're just having some issues with the um, admin login. So, um, and then, and that seems to be like on the clever side. So I will talk to our tech team in just a few minutes and see if that doesn't resolve it. Um, does anybody else have any questions? I I don't wanna keep you, uh, I know we said 2.30 and so I don't wanna keep us too much longer. Um, I, I truly appreciate Linda and Dr. Carl for helping us. Um, everything has been fast and furious as we've been trying to get this in, in and the tech issues I'm sure librarians can empathize have been uh, over the top and so disappointing. Um, because I really do think that if our kids had some practice uh, getting in there and browsing books that they would find, I really like how many nonfiction titles are here. I think kids will enjoy reading those um, over the summer and so setting those goals. So my goal is to have it something resolved by today so that you guys can get started on Monday. Uh, in the meantime, guys, if you'll all check Schoology for some of the videos, you can see how you can use them in parent nights or in uh, start including them. Not yet, wait till you can log in and assign, um, but how you will be able to promote it um, through S'more and everything like that. So, and then with our high school kiddos, because we didn't purchase any of the uh, additional high school packages, I think uh, our focus is gonna be specifically our English language learners. So teaming up with some of those, those teachers before the break, and then of course, any of the kids that are behind in content because of the nonfiction component, I think we can fill some gaps in there and help them catch up. So that's where we're at right now. Um, obviously we have a few things left to do, but if you have any last questions, now's your chance um, before we wrap this up and then we'll, I'll be sending out you know, follow-up emails and information as soon as that gets finished. Great. Well, we we, yes, we hope. Uh, I was just going to say we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, process this video and then send you a link, Miss Marcy, that you can um, distribute. It's just going to be whoever has the link can access the video. Um, is the Thanks. way that it it will work, and the video will be through YouTube. That's um, the service that um, that Carl and I use. So again, we'll give you a, a, a specific link that anyone with that link will be able to go in and access uh, the video recording of the session today. Well, thanks. Thank you again. Um, I'm sure the questions will come once we get access. Oh, so uh, I'm sure I, I, that'll, I'm, be, that'll be soon. I'm already so, reaching out to that. our internal team and, and to Edna and to Miguel. So let's see if we can get that squared away before the end of the day. Yeah, but, uh, before you guys leave, which is in like 30 minutes. Um, yeah. <laughs> but for everybody, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And I'll be in touch. Have a great weekend. And we'll yes, see you. Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.